Joining us right now is Horizon Investments Chief Investment Officer Scott Ladner. Scott, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bert. So the big tech earnings setting the tone this morning. Is that indicative of what's going on right now? You know, we think it is. Uh, we, you know, the, the, the first part of earnings season, what we saw a lot of was basically people getting less for more. So companies were beating earnings like Pepsi and, and Nabisco and Procter and Gamble were beating earnings based on selling less things for more money. So inflation can be actually a pretty helpful thing in the, in the, in the early stages of a recession or in early stages of, of, of inflation you know, showing up because it can actually drive revenue growth up. That's only hold so long as the consumer has a job, a consumer is getting wages, wage increases, and, and is basically healthy and spending money. Um, what we're starting to see maybe right now with this first set of, of ad spending going down and, and Google and Microsoft starting to show some weakness, is maybe the consumer is starting to crack. That's the, that's the thing that we're worried about right now. And, and that's why we're focused on what these bank executives are saying, because for a while the banks were saying how strong the consumer was, right? We've got several bank CEOs in Riyadh uh, this week. It's the Future Investment Initiative Conference, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon, uh, changing his economic outlook a bit. Here's what he said. It's very good news right now in the United States. People see it. Consumers, businesses, still spending, still have lots of money, a lot of fiscal stimulus. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff on the horizon, which is bad and could, not, doesn't necessarily, but could put the United States in a recession. That's not the most important thing for what we think about. We'll manage right through that. I would worry much more about the geopolitics of the world today. What do you think about that as we await the latest numbers on GDP and inflation this week? We've got the first read on third quarter GDP out tomorrow. The expectation is for growth, 2.1 percent growth in the third quarter. Then you've got the personal consumption expenditure report out on Friday. Scott, we are coming off of two quarters of contraction. What are you looking at for 2023? You know, I think we're probably going to continue the contraction. We may, we may print a good number, uh, you know, a good GDP number coming up. Because, again, you know, the, the inflation numbers are boosting revenues, are boosting corporate profits uh, for right now. And the consumer has continued to spend money for right now. Um, what the banks, you know, what, what was not in that clip actually, is the banks are starting to reserve more. They're starting to reserve more against bad loans. Um, and, and we're seeing, we, you know, we're seeing that come, come through in, earn, in earnings. We're just kind of in the first or second inning of that. Um, and so if that does continue, uh, you know, a pace, then we probably are going to find ourselves in a position early next year where we are starting to get, like, the globe slowing down. And, and, these, and these numbers, like, even if we get a little bit of a pop in GDP this time, mm. maybe, maybe that starts to slow in the second, in the first, the, the first half of next year. But consumers aren't spending more money. Retail sales adjusting for inflation were flat to down. No, that's right. And yeah. people, the only way, and someone, I, and I only bring this up, one of your viewers, tweeted this at me the other day, Maria, saying, I can't afford basic necessities, so I'm running up my credit cards. Wow. Why don't more people talk right. about that? I'm like, well, Maria and Stephanie Pomboy have talked about this endlessly all year long. And it's there is a breaking point that, again, brought on by spending that's fomenting inflation and a Federal Reserve that's trying to crush consumers. Well, look, the Fed needs to crush consumers. Like, that's let's be, let's that's be clear. the point, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the Fed wants companies to fire people, and the Fed needs to crush consumers. That is, that is how their playbook works to get inflation back down. We can debate all day long whether that's a good or a bad idea, but we kind of know what they're going to do. Like, we know what the playbook says. You know, the playbook says we have to crush companies and we have to crush consumers because we have an inflation problem right now, and we know what the toolkit looks like in order to solve that. It doesn't mean that it's very pretty to get there. Well, I mean, that's the, that's where we're left with when you have a, a administration, a fiscal authorities who are doing nothing to help, right? They're, they're just feeding demand, discouraging supply, so it's all up to the Fed to play that demand destruction role. In a better world, the Fed gives us stable money and the incentives and the growth are encouraged by the, uh, the fiscal side. So I'm wondering, maybe similar to 94, is it possible you get a nice uh, tailwind in terms of policy if uh, you have uh, gridlock in Washington, Republican control of the Congress, you, you slow down the regulatory machine, that's the end of legislative threats to uh, you go down through a list of industries that will not face new legislation if Republicans take control. Is that possibly an encouragement for investment to bounce back stronger than you expect in 2023? Absolutely, yes. Um, and you know, there, there is a case to be made, like we, it is possible to get a handoff that ends up working. It's just not the most likely outcome right now. But if we do get gridlock in Congress, absolutely, that is super helpful on the regulatory front. That is some positive supply side sort of, sort of pressures. That's a good thing. Um, that would be helpful. The, the only issue with that right now is that's kind of the base case. Mm. Right? I mean, like, gridlock is the base case. 
So that, that's, you, you, you can talk about being kind of in the price or in the market, like that is mm -hmm. probably mostly price. I would argue that gridlock does nothing because Joe Biden has taken it upon himself and the people yeah. in the administration to act outside of Congress, That's like right. with the executive orders war, with or going around Congress, by, like he tried by to do with the Iran deal right. and the, the student, student loan, loan moratorium. Yeah. And today Biden is going to talk about d d what he's doing now to lower prices for American households and he's going to attack corporations. So what does that do? It actually makes inflation worse because you're continuing to strangle the supply side right. while he's juicing the demand side. That's inflationary. In and of itself. He yeah. did it with the vaccine mandate, too. Right. Right. It went around Congress. Bottom no. line, you, are you buying this market or selling it? Uh, right now, we are selling it. Um, and it's, but, but we, don't, we don't think this is disastrous. This is not a 2008 type of scenario, but at 3,800, it is, uh, we don't like the value there. Scott, thanks very much. Thanks, Mary. Good to see you this morning.